In this week's video fishing forecast for New England, we got a look at the October print edition of the Fisherman Magazine, some giant bluefin tuna off Cape Cod, hardtails at Martha's Vineyard, some good bottom fishing for tog and black sea bass in Rhode Island waters, an update on the Coastal Kayak Clash Fishing Tournament, which is your chance to win a brand new Old Town Sportsman Series Autopilot 136, some big striped bass moving through Long Island Sound, updates on the special tiger trout promotion in Connecticut, and much, much more. Let's check it out. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Hey there, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine with this week's web video, Fishing Forecast for New England. I'd like to wish everyone happy October. Um, between the great fishing that we have in the 10th month, the fall blackfish season opening in my home waters of Connecticut, Halloween rounding it out, and of course my birthday coming up in a couple of weeks. I gotta say that October is my favorite month of the year. And who could complain about the weather? I mean, it's beautiful. We've got a little bit of breeze today, but it's nice and warm, clear, wonderful fall weather upon us. And of course, with October, we also have the October monthly print issue of the Fisherman Magazine, hitting newsstands and your mailbox by the end of this week. And of course, it already went live digitally on Monday at thefisherman.com. And as we announced a few weeks ago, a few months ago actually, I believe at this point, we launched a brand new Fisherman.com website and part of this new awesome digital format, you can read each and every article that appears in the magazine in standard web format. So that means there's no longer a need to access the flip book to view the magazine digitally, but of course you can still do that if you would like to. We have that available. Um, and as for uh, um, articles this month, as you'd expect, we hit all of the fishy options for October, including topics such as jigging for blackfish, striped bass on diamond jigs, plugging the fall surf with glide baits, day trip options if you want to run up to New York's Salmon River, an update on the 2020 striped bass tag study, and much, much more. Also of, uh, of interest, um, you might want to give a look to this one, a little article that I wrote this month talking about live eels versus artificial rubber eels uh, off of boats for big striped bass. And this took place, took the photos and so on, over a couple of trips that I made this summer out to Block Island. And it includes photos on the cover and discussion in the article of my personal best boat striped bass, which you can get all the details right now at thefisherman.com. Okay, enough of the promo, on to the report. We're gonna start off, of course, up in Massachusetts where the bluefin tuna bite around the Cape remains excellent. This has been a banner year for bluefin. Uh, Captain John of Fish Chatham Charter has been hammering the big tuna, as always. Uh, some of the recent fish, for instance, that he put his clients onto measured out 98 and 108 inches. That's a massive tuna. Uh, he's also, of course, working some of the local rips uh, around the Cape for, the, uh, for his clients who don't want to tar target with the big game up there. Uh, of course, you can do a double up trip, whatever you'd like, but give him a call today. That's Captain John of Fish Chatham Charters. His phone number is 508. 237-7210. Captain John runs a top-notch outfit up there. He put me on my first ever tuna a couple of years ago, and I highly recommend him. So hit him up. And let's see, I don't have to tell anyone about the winds and weather. I mean, it's beautiful out here today, uh, but if you were to look up, the clouds are ripping on by. Um, but it's not keeping anglers off the water by any means. Out on the vineyard, the derby is going strong. And on Wednesday morning, they had a solid string of weigh-ins coming in, including a pair from Steph Pond. He got a new uh, shore fly rod bonito at 5.31 pounds and a new second place Albi at 9.64. So he is making do with the fly rod in this wind, showing that you can still fish through it. In case you didn't hear, talking about the derby, uh, they eliminated striped bass this year as an eligible species. Got to commend them on that based on what's going on with the status of the striped bass fishery right now. But of course, they still have divisions for bluefish, for false albacore, and for bonita, boat, shore, juniors, uh, uh, seniors, women's, everything, a little bit of it all. So give a look at Martha's Vineyard Fishing Derby. Heading on down into Rhode Island waters, checking in with TJ Kopecki. He's been finding some pretty good success bottom fishing, hunting tog and sea bass with some albies mixed in, working the waters off of Newport, and here he is with a video update. Thanks, Toby. Hey, guys. Uh, hope everybody's having a great week fishing. Uh, I got to tell you, I saw that the, some of the uh, top water explosions that I've seen throughout the last couple of weeks have slowed down a little bit. Uh, last week, 
but uh, starting to see reports again of all those fish starting to boil up again. And I think it's only because of that warm front that came through uh, in September. It kind of slows the fishing down a little bit. But uh, I got to tell you, it did not slow the ground fishing down. I had a chance on Sunday to get out on Branton Reef in Newport and do some ground fishing. Um, stopped at a couple of wrecks on the way to try some tatog. Um, and I gotta tell you, we did really well. It was instant bite as soon as we put the crabs down on the bottom. Um, then we continued out to Breton Reef just to try for some sea bass, look for some albies. Uh, we did see some hot tails, chased them around a little bit, just couldn't get a bite, couldn't connect. Um, but all in all, it was a great day of fishing on, on the reef. There was a lot of boats out there, a lot of guys chasing hardtails. Um, but there was also a lot of guys ground fishing. And uh, actually, while we were fishing for the tug, I connected with some really nice sea bass. Um, there are some good sized sea bass down there. Um, not only did we connect to, uh, with the crab on the bottom, we also did a little jigging on the bottom for them, uh, which is always fun with some light gear. Um, I also heard some reports uh, of some more stripers, more and more, coming into the rivers of uh, Barrington and Warren, and also the Coles River, where I do a lot of fishing. There's been lots and lots of schoolies. I uh, have seen lots of bait in there. I'm not sure if the bait is getting in there as a refuge, uh, just to get out of some of that wind that we've had in protected water, but um, it's been really good lately. Um, and I hope uh, everybody else has an opportunity to get out there. and. Uh, We'll catch you next time. Sticking with the bottom fish, um, I was talking to Thomas Hude this week as he reports some really good tog action off his kayak in Rody waters. I included actually, it started, I included a picture of him in last week's uh, uh, kayak discussion uh, with the black fish, and I used a photo from last season, and he called me out on it. Uh, so he sent me a nice photo of a of, of a pile of tog that he recently caught, and I've been hearing the early tog bite in Rhode Island has been very good despite some of these winds that we been having either on days when the winds subside or where guys know how to tuck out of the wind. So I might even uh, uh, load my yak up on the trailer and head east this weekend as I sure have the black fish bug biting already. And speaking of kayaks, by the time you watch this video, of course, it's going to be October 1st, and the September Fish of the Month, which is Hardtails, will be in the books for the first annual Coastal Kayak Clash Fishing Tournament. Now, we had a slew of, of entries coming right out the gate that first week or so of September. It seemed every day we were getting a couple, and then the entries for Hardtails slowed down, as pretty much everywhere with this wind that I keep mentioning made the bite difficult at best. But guys are still getting on them, still getting some entries, but no worries. Uh, with the change of the calendar, calendar went to another month. We have a new species to work on for the fish of the month consideration for October. It's the fan favorite bluefish. Now remember that the only time you got to you can you really need to submit an entry um, in a kayak, coastal kayak clash for a fish that is not going to make the top three, which you can check out updated weekly at thefisherman.com is if it is for consideration for that fish of the month, which again, for October, we have the bluefish, and then it rounds out in November with blackfish. So get on out there this month, get the gator blitzes going, take some photos, submit the entries, and of course, for complete rules, details, and to sign up for the Coastal Kayak Clash, you can visit thefisherman.com right now. And continuing with the reports, there have been some uh, Decent pods of striped bass of all sizes moving along the, the beachfront in small sort of short-lived waves with fish even already beginning to stage in the rivers of the tidal rivers of Connecticut. We've got anything from schoolies to legit 40 plus pound fish being caught right now. Uh, I heard from regular Fisherman Magazine contributor Nick Canaris. He, caught, he he dropped me an email, said he's been getting out, doing pretty good numbers of slot fish lately with some bigger bass mixed in. He's primarily doing the damage on topwater, but he's been seeing a lot of guys also around him using the snag and drop technique. And now, just want to say, keep in mind that come 2021, um, if you're targeting striped bass with bait you're going to have to use inline circle hooks. So now is as good a time as any to make the switch. Have you got any questions on the use of circle hooks? You can check out a couple of videos that I've done over the last couple of years on the subject. Uh, first up, we got how to tie the power snell, which is my primary knot for connecting a circle hook to my leader. I'd show the entire process 
in this video right now that you can see. It's also loaded up to YouTube, and you can find it at thefisherman.com. And I got another one, uh, Snag and Don't Drop Just Yet, which discusses how I approach snagging bunker in the surf to immediately flip back out and use as a live swimming bait. Um, of course, in this video, it was done a few years ago before I made the full switch over to Circle, so you're going to see a J-hook used, but I can assure you that it works just as well with those Circle hooks that you're now going to be required to use. So give those videos a look. And for my fellow Connecticut blackfish hunters, uh, we got a couple more weeks till the season opens, or a little over a week, excuse me, October 10th. Our buddies over at Black Hall Outfitters in Old Lyme and Westbrook have made a few changes to their annual Togtober fishing tournament. Where in the past years it was just a two-day event, for 2020 it's going to run a full three weeks from the opener October 1 through October 31st. The entry fee is just 30 bucks, and they not only have a big cash payout for the biggest fish entered, they've got a really cool second prize, um, Tsunami and Maxell Rod and Reel combo, and they also have some weekly uh, big fish prizes to be awarded. So head on over to the events calendar right now at thefisherman.com to get all the details and sign up today. Uh, but it's not just saltwater action that we got going on right now in New England as fall trout stocking is well underway across all of New England. Now unfortunately while we haven't had a whole lot of rain of late, it means a lot of the streams and rivers are at um, too low levels for stocking, but they're still able to put fish into the lakes and ponds throughout New England. And Connecticut announced that they are kicking in the special tiger trout promotion. It was supposed to go this spring, but they postponed it. So with uh, uh, complete details, we've got a little video clip from Mike Boshane of the Fisheries Division of the Connecticut DEP right now with all the details. Mike Boshane with the Fisheries Division, proud to announce that this fall, 2020, we will be rolling out our Tame a Tiger campaign to promote the return of tiger trout to Connecticut's hatchery system. So this fall, coming up in the next few weeks, we'll be stocking out 3,000 adult tiger trout, some of them over 14 inches long, and to our rivers and streams and some of our lakes and ponds around the state. And the first 500 people who submit their photo of a tiger trout to us through our uh, webpage and our Google form will get a free Tame the Tiger t-shirt from us. So really good incentive to get out there and try to find your tiger trout. Uh, really cool looking t-shirt. It's nice and orange like a tiger. Uh, we got original artwork on the back from Paul Fusco, our wildlife uh, graphic artist, and it's an awesome t-shirt, kind of a, a collector's edition if you do that for Connecticut's Fisheries t-shirts. First in a series of many, we hope to come. So what I'd like to do is because it can be very confusing as to what a tiger trout versus a brown trout, even a brook trout may look like, I'm going to show you the defining characteristics. Um, so that if you, so that hopefully you won't send me a picture of a brown trout instead of a tiger trout. But if you do, we appreciate it, and I'll just let you down gently and say keep on trying. Okay, thank you. So we have a brown trout here, stocked brown trout. We can tell it's stocked because the the curve of this pectoral fin and dorsal fin that comes from rear, being reared in the hatchery, but it's also light body with dark spots. Now, one of the confusing things on some of our hatchery fish is that these black spots tend to bleed together to make it look like kind of a continuous line. But tiger trout will not have really any spots at all like this. Uh, they are blending together and I'll show you a good example. But here's a typical stocked brownie. There's some other pictures on our webpage. Take a look of those. Contrast that with this wild fish. You can see the fins are fairly straight rays all the way across. Even the dorsal fin. No damage to the wearing on the opoco. And a brook trout has this worm like patterning on the top dark body with light colored spots. Uh, Tiger trout, again, will not have any spot. So we, ha we just happened to be lucky enough today, uh, very fortunate to have found a wild tiger trout. And you can see here how it has basically a cream colored body with the blending of these lines, again, it, um, into wavy patterns. This is a little bit different than what our stocked fish will look like, but the general gist is here. And they will be very easily confused with some of our browns that do have this kind of blurring of the spots together. but. Um, also on a tiger trout, it has kind of the fins of a brook trout, where you get this white, white line and black margin, which brown trout do not have. So you see that nice white margin with the black line. That's diagnostic of a brook trout. Uh, but when it's on this with no red or blue spots and just black or brown lines, that's a tiger. Tiger trout is the result of when we have a brook trout and a brown trout come together and spawn in the same area. And it makes a true sterile hybrid, which is the tiger trout. So it gets some characteristics of the brook trout, 
like the, the fin, the reddish fins with the lines, and it gets some characteristics like the brown trout, the lighter body, and then the spots on both are blurred together. So we put the brook, the brown together, and you get a tiger. Thanks a lot, Mike. I definitely look forward to getting into on some tiger trout this fall. If you've never caught any of them, they are a really cool combo, as was noted in the video. Um, and they are probably one of the hardest fighting trout that we have in local waters. I caught a pretty good sized one this spring as the state did stock fish uh, some of the tigers across the state in a few select waters. Unfortunately, at the time, it wasn't eligible for the tiger tamer shirt. But I can assure you that I'm going to be out hunting them this fall and hopefully get a legit fish and get my shirt as well. All right, well, there you have it. I'm Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine, wishing you tight lines if you head out onto the water this weekend. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English chew Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.